Hi, here's a tutorial for reinforced concrete column design designed to uh, Eurocode 2, that's EC2. Uh, I have a column, it's 350 wide and 400 uh, deep. It's um, uh, floor to floor height in the building it's situated in is 3200, but it's got some deep beams on either side. And here's the standard data it's got 32 Newton concrete, 500 Newton bars. I'm assuming that there are 25mm main bars in the column, that's the longitudinal bars running up vertically through the column, and H8 ties. I'm taking 45mm cover, and uh, as with most columns, it carries a large compressive force. It's got an axial load of 2,464 kN applied to the top, and it's got a bending moment around its strong axis of 94 kN. Meters. So I'm assuming that the bending is running around this axis. That's that's the way that the bending is, is working. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to calculate the uh, clear height of the column. Uh, that's because I make use of that a little later on in the calculations. So the clear height of the column is simply the distance uh, above one beam or slab uh, to the next beam or slab. And for us, it's 3,200 minus 690, which is 2510 millimetres. From that, I can work out the effective height of the column. I have, have a little table here that tells me that for different end conditions at the top and at the bottom, I can uh, apply a different factor to the height of the column. Well, my column is fixed at the top, so that's in condition at top is 1, that's fixed, and at the bottom it's fixed. I'm assuming it's got deep beams framing into it, top and bottom. That means I can reduce its clear height by a factor of 0.75. So the effective height is 0.75 times 2510. That gives me a height of 1883 millimeters. Now I already know I've got a bending moment of 94 kilonewton meters. However, that bending moment may be increased by bending moments due to eccentric loading within the column. And they come from a variety of sources. And so I'm going to check out three conditions whereby uh, additional bending moments can be added to the column. So these nominal eccentricities, so the first one, I'm simply going to consider the height of the column divided by 30. So that's um, H, I take H as the height of the column, that's uh, 400 divided by 30 equals 13.3 mil. Okay, the second condition I'm going to consider is the clear height of the column, that's 18. 83 divided by 400. And that gives me a value of 4.7 mil, not very much. And finally, I have to consider just simply an eccentricity of 20 millimeters. I'm going to take the worst of these. Well, the worst of these is just taking 20 mil, so that's the one I'm going to adopt. Right. Adopting that gives me an eccentric bending moment. Oops, sorry. due to the compressive force, the axial load at the top, the eccentric bending moment is 2464, that's the load, times the eccentricity at the top, 0.02 metres, that gives me a value of 49.3 kilometers. metres. Right. Therefore now the total bending moment that the column has to support is going to be this eccentric bending moment, 49.3, added to the actual design bending moment, which I was given at the start of this uh, example. Add them both together, it comes to 143.3 kilonewton meters. All right. Now I have to design the column to carry a bending moment and an axial load. And the way I do that is to make use of some column design charts. There are several column design charts. This one I've extracted from 
the Institution of Structural Engineers Manual for the Design of Concrete Building Structures to EC2. Uh, common design charts typically are uh, titled with D2 over H being various uh, numbers. So there are different common design charts according to this factor, D2 divided by H. So that's the first thing I want to find out. What's my D2 divided by H? Well, D2 is the distance from the centre of the bar to the face of the column. That's D2. Okay, how am I going to work that out? Well, I know what the cover is. The cover is 45 mil. I know the thickness of the tie bars. The ties are 8 mil. And I know that the main bars are 25 mil diameter. Okay, so D2 is going to be 45 plus 8 plus. 25 over 2. That gives me an answer of 65.5 millimetres. H, uh, I've already calculated that a little earlier. Uh, sorry, H I already know, therefore D2 over H is 65.5 divided by 400. That equals for us is 0.164. Uh, I'm going to therefore use, I could use design chart uh, for 0.15 or 0.2, 0.25. There's a design chart here for DT over H of 0.2. Okay, that's the conservative approach. I could, I could uh, consider the design chart for 0.15 and then for 0.2 and interpolate, but I'm not going to do that. Right, let's have a look. This design chart makes use of two, two factors. The bending moment divided by some factor of the um, column and the actual force divided by that uh, uh, some, some uh, figures from the column. So let's have a look at each of those two axes so that we can um, make use of the column. So first one across the bottom is M over B H squared F C K. So for us, the bending moment, 143.3 times 10 to the 6, all divided by 350. That's the width of the column. Just move that out of the way, put the width of the column, divided 400 squared, that's H squared, and the strength of the concrete, which is 32. That comes out to be 0.08. Now for the next axis, I need N divided by BH FCK. So that's really the ratio of the load against the strength of the column. 2464 times 10 to the cubed. So I've converted that from kilonewtons to newtons, just as I converted the bending moment from kilonewton meters to newton millimeters. So B H FCK. That comes out to be 0.55. And I can use these two figures with my design chart to calculate how much reinforcement um, my column needs. Now lots of column design makes use of design charts and this is just a typical one. So let's have a look. We have the uh, factor relating to the bending moment is 0.08. 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08. Here we go. So somewhere up here. And then the factor relating to the axial load is n is 0 0.55. So there's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0.55. Okay. I place it just here, and that's between the line of 0 0.2 and the line of 0 0.3. So I'm going to say, just to be on the safe side, that AF, that AS, FYK, BH, FCK, so AS, FYK, over BH, 
fck is let's say let's say it's 0 0.28 0 0.28 great so from that I can work out what area of steel I need it's 0 0.28 times b which is 350 times h which is 400 times fck which is 32 all divided by the strength of the steel which as we worked out earlier or we need, is 500 newtons okay all this comes out to be 2509 millimeters squared well if I'm using 25 mil diameter bars how many bars do I need? 25 mil diameter bars if I use one two three four mm, still not enough five not enough so I need six H25 bars so six H25 bars would give me two nine forty five millimeters squared of steel that's great well to complete this example what I'd like to do now is just work out where to put my tie bars my tie bars the main uh, the, the tie bars must be at least a quarter the size of the main steel so 25 divided by 4 is around about 6 millimeters so I'm okay so far Equally, there must be no less than six millimeter diameter bars. So I'm using H8 bars. So I'm okay there. And the vertical spacing of the bars, at least in the uh, for the main height of the column, they're going to be tucked into the column like this. And the vertical spacing of the, these tie bars, these are the tie bars here, must be no more than 20 times the bar diameter, the least column dimension, so for us it's 350mm, or 400mm. So 20 times the, um, the bar diameter, that's 25mm bars that we're using, so that comes out to be 500 mil. So the vertical spacing of our column tie bars, we're going to take as 350 mil. Now you could and should go on to check. Uh, the minimum steel required in the column. However, I'm going to end this tutorial here. Great. Thanks for watching.